So it's April. That means I've run out of time to keep putting this stuff off. It is time for position rankings. Y'all ask me all year, what player do I think is better than another player? And I kind of put this thing off because I changed my mind a bunch. You know what I mean? So today we're going to do a top 12 edge players. All right. So that's a 4-3 defensive end and a 3-4 outside linebacker. Okay. Edge, pass rush, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to talk about where we're going to play him at, a, you know, like a real short breakdown of him. And I'm going to compare him to the other guys that are on the list to kind of tell you why I put somebody where. So uh, this should be fun, man. Uh, something that I'm going to do differently this year, though, I, I, I've never done this before, but I'm going to talk about two people that didn't make the list, a guy that I liked that didn't make the list and a guy that I did not like that didn't make the list. First of all, the guys that I didn't like, uh, Terrell Lewis is kind of going to speak for him and Anthony. Both the Alabama children are going to be put together here. I just didn't think they were good enough to make my list here. I mean, Terrell, Terrell is talented. But I just don't think he does enough as a complete football player, and it especially compared to what the other guys are are on my list as well. And and then plus he's like injury guy too, so I, I was kind of like conflicted putting him on here. I mean, it's not no major hate. He can go out and you know lead the league in sacks. I don't know, but just me personally on my list, I couldn't put Terrell Lewis on there. So don't look for him to be in my top twelve. And a guy that I do like that didn't make my top twelve is Alden Robinson. One of my senior bowl guys, and I discovered him in the senior bowl, uh, Syracuse. Uh, pretty fun dude. If y'all haven't watched him, y'all go y'all go check out the film. Check out my senior bowl pass rush breakdown footage. You can go watch you some Alden Robinson there. Um, like him. I'm a, I'm a big fan of him. He's going to be a hand in, hand in the dirt guy. He can stand up if you ask him to, but he didn't make the list. I just don't think he qualifies. But let's run it for the cardio. My first guy in my top 12 is North Carolina's Jason Strobridge. I really like this player, and I think he got better as the year went on. And, and I really, he's another senior bowl guy that I got a lot of respect for in the senior bowl. What I like about him the most is at defensive end, he's probably going to be a left defensive end, right? Most likely. Um, because I think he can give you that stoutness. He can give you that run stopping ability play side thing. But as a pass rusher, watch this. Y'all love to make fun of me because I always want to put guys at, you know, three tech or whatever. But hey, I, I looked at Jason Strawberries and I was like, boy, I can't wait to see that dude at three tech. He would be so great right there. And when you're watching the the the, the film on him, like they never put him at, at, at three tech. They'll put him there sometimes, but they'll never really let him fly at three tech. But then he went to the senior bowl. They put him at three tech and he just started smoking everybody at three tech. So I'm a big fan of Jason Strawberries. Now, will he show up in my defensive tackle list? No, he's going to be here at the the end list because i think that's where he exists but um big fan of jason strobridge kenny willikas i think kenny willikas was just a little more solid than jason in terms of you know play consistency and all that kind of stuff plus kenny willikas man you know i i, I started off having a weird relationship with him because every time he beat somebody i would go man the dude he just beat didn't have to get beat like that. But what mattered that what mattered was Kenny Wilkins just kept beating people. Now, is Kenny Wilkins gonna be a guy that can move inside and play three tech? I don't I don't think he's he's gonna be one of those guys. He's a hand he's a hand in the dirt dude regardless. Um if it's a three four team, he'll probably stay as a hand in the dirt guy. Um but I like him. He's a hand technique dude, probably not as athletic as the rest of these cats. Um I would say Jason is is more athletic than Kenny Willikas is, but Kenny Willikas was a little more consistent, and um, I like technical. I like technique, man. I like technique. Um, this was my first kind of head scratcher, man. I kind of got to, you know, as a talent evaluator, I still got to get into a groove where I trust myself, where I trust what I'm seeing. I know a lot of y'all trust me, but I'm still – I'm still kind of getting in that phase where I'm growing. I've only been doing this for a handful of years and you know, that's just that. But uh, Curtis Weaver from Boise State, you know, he's a guy that I would put his hand in, hands in the dirt. Uh, somebody's gonna try to stand him up. I wouldn't recommend it, but Curtis Weaver definitely gave you sack production. And that's why he's right here. That's why he's he's right here in my 12, 11, 10. That's why he's at the, the 10 spot because he gives you sack production. He beats the hell out of the dudes in front of him. But those guys play for BYU. They play for, what, like Hawaii, um, um, regular-ass university state. You know what I mean? Like, he just beating up on these civilian kids. And I'm like, man, I would love to see 
Curtis Weaver play in front of some better competition, right? Now, you can only play who lines up in front of you, to be fair. But I had to put him here because the sack production is there. The tackle for loss production is there. Versus the run, versus the pass is there. He's doing it against lawyers and mortgage loan processes or whatever, but he was consistent enough to get the job done. He had like double digit sacks this year. Um, number nerds hit me up in my comment section and tell me what his exact sack number was. Um, but Curtis Weaver, man, this was a bit of a a bit of a head scratcher for me, but I put him there because the sack numbers were consistent. Now, if he could just continue to be, you know, um, to, to just work on his work on his crab, probably lose a little weight, um, you know, add a add another dimension to his game, then Curtis can develop and be a better player than what he was. But Julian O'Quara, in which I feel the exact opposite of what I feel about Curtis Weaver, I really like Julian O'Quara. And it's interesting because some of the guys that I really, really like on this list, they don't have all the best sack production in the world. I don't think Julian O'Quara was big sack guy this year. He got some pressure this year. And I think Julian will probably, you know, be also in the linebacker list. Like he's in my edge guy list here because he is edge guy. He's a, he's a long pass rushy dude, but he's also stout enough to play against the run. I like that about him. Um, he's an outside linebacker, but I do think he's more of a linebacker than an edge guy. But he can give you stuff in the in the passing game. When you watch him as a pass rush, you see it. You see the the burst. You see the twitchy stuff he got going on. Uh, the he just got to be a little more polished. He just got to get his get his technique up to par. I trust his skills more than Curtis Weaver. Okay, Curtis can have a whole bunch of sacks that I don't like. Julian can have pressures that I thought was impressive. If that makes sense. And I'm going to say that about another player, too. Um, Y'all can <laughs> guess what player I'm going to say that about. But we'll cross that road when I get there. But I do like Julian Okwara. I like him a bunch. And um, he's going to be an outside linebacker for you. I'm not putting his hands in the dirt at all. Um, another guy that's similar to Julian Okwara is um, uh, Bradley and I from Utah. He's another guy that, that that tore up the senior bowl. Fantastic. And the reason I put him over Julian was the sack numbers. I think they're 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 both very similar that they're both going to be outside linebacker guys standing up um, and they're pass rushing guys. But I think that Bradley and I was a little more consistent in being pass rushy guy. Julian may be a little more complete. OK. Let's be fair. Julian is probably a little more balanced of a player, but I do think Bradley and I is a mile ahead of him in terms of pass rushing production. Um, go watch my senior bowl videos. You can, you can go watch Bradley and I just line up and smoke the hell out of people with his first step. And if you manage to get through the first step, he, he, he actually has hand technique. He rushes with a plan. Um, you know, he, he sets moves up, man. I really like Bradley and I, um, he's here because he got top tier pass rushing production, but I would like for him to be a little more complete, man, but we'll cross that road when we, when we, uh, when we get there and Josh Uche from Michigan, I can say the exact same thing about him that I just said about Bradley and I like word for word, the exact same thing. Senior bowl dude showed up, beat the shit out of everybody. Um, probably more of a pass rusher than a balanced guy right but the one thing that puts josh uche over bradley and i is i think that uche is more of a natural pass rusher than bradley and i and i think bradley and i got the better numbers this year uh the the better sack numbers but that also goes back i'm not i'm not always going to be sack guy it goes back to yo i like uche's misses more than bradley's hits if that makes sense bradley over there rushing in the the Pac-12, you know, so it's bound to look a certain way. Now, to be fair to Brad, I don't want to say that because, I mean, he was beating the shot at the Pac-12 kids, but he did go to the Senior Bowl and bust a lot of ass there, too. So I want to be fair, but Josh Uche rushed in the Big Ten, and he also showed up to the Senior Bowl and whooped up on the Senior Bowl kids as well. I just think Bradley and I is a better pass rusher. Uh, pardon me, Josh Uche from Michigan is a better pass rusher than Bradley and I. So um, that's why he is there over him Jonathan Grenard is very interesting because you can see the nuance you can see the age in him you know what I mean he he rushes like he's been rushing for a long time now he may not have the highest ceiling 
amongst the guys on this list maybe that should be another thing i should do say who has the highest ceiling and the highest floor or whatever i think jonathan grenard's floor is ridiculous i think you can bring him in and play him today i don't think you got to develop him you know what i mean because he has technique he has hands he just super polished is he the most let me see dun, 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 dun. he's probably the most polished out, out of all the guys that i've showed you so far i gotta remember who i put in front of him but um in in, in terms of a polished pass rushy dude Jonathan Grenard puts the nipple on the titty. He's fantastic. I think, and, and I think there are better pass rushing ability guys than him. I think physically, and I'm 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 talking this way because I'm trying to figure my words out while I'm while I'm talking them. So pardon me. Um, I think Josh Uche and Bradley and I are better physical pass rush talents than Jonathan Grenard. You know what I mean? But their technique may not be as great right now, so their ceiling is higher. If they can get Grenard's technique, they'll be better than him. But Grenard is like better than them like today. I think his technique is gonna put him over the edge today. He may not uh, be as bursty or quick or as twitchy as them. Um, and there's another guy that, that goes right by that example. But I do think as a polished pass rush, he's better than them. Plus, he gives you more versus the run than I think these lad, these you know the three, three, four guys in front of him. So, Jonathan Grenard, man, I am a big fan of him from um, Florida. Now, Yeter Gross Models is another one that I kind of head scratched on that I kept changing my mind about because once upon a time, Gross Models wouldn't even be on this list. You know, earlier when I showed y'all uh, the uh, Bama kids or whatever, Terrell Lewis, I was going to show you Gross Models right there. <laughs> I was going to do it. But I had to be fair and I had to accumulate all the stats or whatever, right? Just as much as I talk about Bradley and I and Josh Uche being fantastic pass rushers, right they give value as pass rushers and they're kind of cool in the run game i gotta respect what gross models does in the run game right now if i say okay cool i got josh uche to, to uh to to uh, play third downs and i got gross models to to be my run stoppy guy gross models is going to play more downs than josh uche because gross models can play first and second down plus in the pass rushing down you ain't got to take gross models off the field he can give you something in the passing game he's not the best pass rusher here he can give you something in the passing game um but he's not as good as those guys but in terms of run game it ain't close he's smoking the previous entries here in the run game that's why i gotta respect what he does and in terms of pass rushing he's not the best at it but he has length he's got some natural power to him he's not a bendy guy that's fine i gotta respect power rushers this year or whatever because there's plenty of them i think if you take the tools that you that you have with yeter gross models and you kind of teach him some pass rush stuff he can develop into a guy that can give you something as a pass rusher but he's here because he smoked guys in the run game and i think that is very important that is very important um yo son like we 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 gotta we gotta talk about zach moss potential zach, zach moss <laughs> my bad zach bond uh i was talking about running backs earlier pardon me zach bond we gotta talk about zach bond being a potential first round guy you want to talk about a riser um beating the shit out to see your bowl kids again zach bond you know when you when you watch him you know i'm not saying that he's gonna give me tj watt vibes because that'll be kind of lazy of me uh the wisconsin thing or whatever but when we were watching tj watt and you go back and watch my tj watt film session this is not a player comparison i don't do those but the conversation that we're having was okay who is this guy as a linebacker then who is he as an edge guy right go watch my zach bond video he's fantastic as a flat out linebacker in terms of i'm a linebacker i'm just gonna go run somewhere i'm just gonna go run around and tackle people he's cool there if you put him at um at edge guy right and you play him versus the run he's fantastic as edge guy versus the run go watch my film the proof is in the pudding but he smokes people. He puts the satin on the panties as a pass rusher. I think Zach Bond is climbing into the first round conversation. I don't know where y'all got him at. He's in my top 25 or so picks or whatnot. Um, he'll be right around there somewhere. But man, I, I, the more film you watch on on Zach Bond, the, 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 the more you got to respect him. 
the more you got to respect him, man. Um, and, I, and I just think he's he's better. He's way better than everybody that we that we talked about. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna say way better. Pardon me, but he's better than these guys because I would say that he's the most complete guy that we've talked about so far in terms of. Um, I know what he gives you in the run game. I know what he gives you in the passing game. He can play multiple spots. Um, and he got sack production versus like big schools, big 10. You know what I mean? He got sack production in the big 10, not BYU in Hawaii, but he's actually smoking people. He, he shows you the athletic ability, did the off season thing and press you a little bit more there. Senior bowl stuff. Um, plus, I mean, he, come on, son. What else, what else is that to say? What else is there to say? And now, after giving all that praise to Zach Bond, I kind of got to explain why these first three people are better than him. So let's run that for the cardio. My number three guy is K. Levon Chason. Um, <clears throat> this is the weird thing about K. Levon Chason. He has the highest ceiling out of everybody on this list because we see that natural, quick twitch, bendy ability, that length, that burst. He can absolutely, potentially, possibly develop into being one of the better pass rushers uh in this class and i don't I mean i just want to be careful when i say things like this man because y'all will take one small six second thing that i say edit it and hold it against me for the rest of my life y'all will do that the only the only thing about kayla von chase son that kind of gives you any types of any type of reservations is um how he shows up versus big talent right so i had to go back and i had to do my research right you know he he's played against the best tackles that you have to offer right you know the uh the uh, bama guys the georgia dudes you know, you know you know clemson got some guys over there um so you got to you got to watch Kayla Von chase on not i don't want to say with a grain of salt but when you watch him in the big games he's smoking the hell out of people right and you watch him early in the season, he'll just kind of disappear sometimes, right? Caleb on Chase on, to be fair to him, he does disappear sometimes. So also when you look at his sack numbers, he ain't got a lot of sack numbers, but when you do the research, you just kind of watch Caleb on Chase on, he gets a lot of pressure, right? He, get a, he, he gets a lot of almost pressures. When he was playing against Alabama, I mean, he was hitting to him. He was hitting Trevor Lawrence. You know what I mean? That may not show up in the box score, but he was getting hands on those guys. So in my mind, all that accumulates to is, man, Caleb Vaughn just got to work on finishing, right? He's got to work on his polish. He got to work on being one step ahead of himself. You know, if he thinks, oh, I'm just going to beat this dude with speed, you need to have three other moves just in case that first move doesn't work to get you back into the swing of things just in case, you know, just in case somebody shows up physically more talented than you because uh you know you know i tell you what kayla von rode up against andrew uh andrew thomas from georgia a few times and he and you know thomas gave him a fit on a handful of plays but kayla von eventually figured it out he figured it out and, and he put hands right back on andrew so you know once kayla von gets a little more consistent once he finishes and really gets his move together man i think kayla von could be one of, one of the better guys in this class if so uh, I think his floor is really low right now, but his ceiling is incredibly high, All right? Um, which is the exact opposite of my number two guy. I think AJ Epinesa is better than Kayla Von Chason. Um, AJ Epinesa, look, take everything I've said about everybody that we just talked about, right? The, the previous, I can't count, 10 people, the previous 10 people that we just talked about, everything that they do well is basically what I'm saying about AJ Epinesa, except for this. Let's talk about the one bad thing we could possibly say about AJ Epinesa, and I'm, I'm gonna flip that into a good thing. He's not bursty. He's not traditional defensive end. He's not quick, he's not flying off the ball, he not bending, okay? Now let's push that goofy mess to the side of the table and let's talk about it. He gets sacks though, he gets sacks versus top tier quality opponents. I tell you what, if I tap y'all on the show, I say, listen, y'all, would you rather have a quick, twitchy, bendy uh, six sacks or a slower physical ran you over 12 sacks? You'll look me in the face and say, I mean, I just want the sacks, Vach. Give me the sacks. Give me the production. Give me the numbers, right? That's AJ Epinesa. You know what I mean? It's not gonna look flashy. It's not going to look flashy, but AJ Epinesa helped me grow as a talent evaluator. Why? Because at first I was those people. I hated power rushers. I hated them. I like quick, twitchy, bendy guys, you know, but AJ Epinesa bullies people. He bullies people. 
and you can be quick twitchy bendy guy and get a sack in two and a half seconds aj epines can run straight down the middle of your chest and get the same sacks in two and a half seconds and he got more aj epines is a double digit sack guy like what two years in a row number nerds help me out you know what i'm saying uh, plus, I think AJ Epinesa would be fantastic playing three tech. He's another one of these guys that I just want to shove inside and let him be quicker, um, quicker than guards. You know what I mean? Plus, he's probably stronger than guards, right? <laughs> but that's what I say about um, AJ Epinesa. The difference between him and Caleb on Chase on for the most part, AJ Epinesa um, is 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 more polished than Chase on right now. Epinesa is ready to go today. He's his floor is a lot higher. I don't think his ceiling is as high. I think he's about as good as he's gonna get now. Of course, he can get a little more stronger, and he's probably he's probably like a day away from his man body. Like he's pretty big and physically imposing right now, but um aj epinesa dog he, he he's my he's my number two guy and the only reason he ain't my number one guy is because the number one guy is, is is pretty damn fantastic in his own right but shouts out to aj epinesa for being my number two but hey chase young my number one guy it, it, no surprise here i ain't had to tell y'all that y'all i mean come on this is uh pretty simple he's a fantastic pass rusher now is he a perfect prospect no he's not a perfect prospect y'all can go watch my chase young film session most of these guys got film sessions y'all can go watch them uh, and i'll explain to you why he's not the perfect prospect but in terms of a uh, pass rusher he's a very special pass rusher is he generational i don't want to say that because we in one generation and we've seen four top tier pass rushers just like him so i want to be careful when i say things like that but in terms of a top tier pass rush that's, that's going to be one of the better guys in the league chase young is that dude i ain't got to talk about him forever y'all already know the vibes y'all seen the highlight tapes y'all seen my film chase is that dude and it just is what it is he's my number one guy hey man this is pretty uh pretty long-winded of me but this is what y'all been asking for. Uh, I didn't want to be a platform that told you a player was better than another player and didn't give you context for it. So I gave you a gang of context in this video. Um, so we just talked about my, we just talked about my top twelve edge players. Later on tonight, I'm going to do a live stream. Uh, today's Tuesday. I'm going to do a live stream for y'all to basically react. And on my stream, we do uh, we do phone calls and all that. So if you disagree with anybody that's on my top twelve list, you can call into the show and tell me why you think I'm trash, and I'll rebuttal angrily. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing. It's a safe place, man, for you to call for us to call in and just talk ball and all that. Also on draft day, I'm going to be um um streaming, reacting, analysis, breakdown, all that good stuff. Day one and day two of the draft. So y'all tune into that. Follow me on Twitter, V O C H L O N B A R D I. Shouts out to all my Patreon people. Pick up some merch. All those links are in the description for you. This is the first um the first of many breakdowns. I'm gonna try to go live every day uh until the draft. I'm gonna try to drop a video every day for the draft. So tomorrow we're gonna do offensive linemen, tackles, guards, and centers. Y'all hold it down for Doski Woski, the Peace Whiskey is free. Peace, y'all.